This week, Fox 13 News has been taking you around the West, showing you what has happened to the Great Basin's other salt water lakes. We're doing it in hopes of finding solutions to the receding Great Salt Lake. And tonight, we'll take you to the eastern slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains, where a small group charted a new path to save an ancient lake. Fox 13 News anchor Max Roth is our guide. A lot of people describe saltwater lakes as dead because most don't support typical marine life. But most of us now realize the Great Salt Lake is alive, and it sustains life in America's driest region, the Great Basin. Last night, we showed you how Los Angeles diverted a river and took the life from Owens Lake. Tonight, we see another lake that faced that same fate until a creative effort saved it. Mono Lake is a distinct looking circle on a map, kind of like a lumpy bagel. In person, it's an entrancing gem on the eastern edge of some of America's tallest mountains. Yosemite National Park is right up the road. Denise just drove to Mono for the first time since her childhood. Just everything seems a little different, a little drier and smaller. That's one of many similarities between Mono Lake and the Great Salt Lake. Both aren't what they once were. Each lake serves as punctuation at the east and west ends of the Great Basin, each in the shadow of mountains that provide life-sustaining water. The Mono Lake Committee is a nonprofit dedicated to preserving the lake. One, two, three. And they took our team of journalists onto the lake in canoes. Like the Great Salt Lake, Mono teams with birds in the water and along the shores and islands. Both are critical to entire species. We've already seen eared grebes, Canada geese, avocets. I think there was a northern harrier that just went by, yeah. While birds are suffering due to low lake levels in the Great Basin, they may be what saves Mono and the Great Salt Lake. They gained the notice of the Audubon Society, which has advocated for the Great Basin's lakes for more than a generation. Marcel Shoup directs Audubon's Saline Lakes program. Here at Great Salt Lake and Mono Lake, you have um, you know, 99% of the North American population of eared grebes that use these two lakes. Mono is tiny compared to the Great Salt Lake. Another difference, Mono has these tufas. They're spires that look like they're drawn by Dr. Seuss, but they're limestone formed by the separation of minerals when subsurface fresh springs emerge into this alkaline lake. The tufas can only grow underwater, so they are natural measuring sticks, showing Mono is much lower than it was before Los Angeles closed claimed its water rights and extended its aqueduct to Mono's inlet of Levining Creek. I can remember uh, coming here and there'd be no water going over the dam. Jeff McQuilkin directs the Mono Lake Committee. He's showing us the northernmost intake of the Los Angeles aqueduct. Water entering here has a 419 mile trip to the big city. And the big city used to take the lion's share of it. But when the water level dropped, a professor and a group of college students noticed. They surveyed the lake's ecosystem, documented the danger to brine shrimp and birds and people breathing dust. And they sued for the lake's right to exist. And Mono Lake was at the forefront of realizing that if we don't manage water well and give the environment and birds and wildlife and places that people like to recreate and see at the table, you're not going to have a state that's um, where you want to live and you're going to have a lot of ecological problems. That lawsuit, brought by the newly formed Mono Lake Committee and the Audubon Society, asked the courts to recognize water rights don't override the vital interests of the ecosystem and the people who have to live with the consequences of disappearing water. In 1983, the California Supreme Court said they were right. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power had gone too far. So there is a voice for the environment, the seat at the table, and figuring things out because it's important. But I think back then they sort of figured like, well, go somewhere else to fish, or the birds will find somewhere else. And now we know there really aren't other somewhere else. Things are more complicated in Utah. Instead of one entity, the LA Department of Water and Power, the Great Salt Lake's water is diverted by several. And we don't have a faraway city to blame. We are taking the water from our lake. In studio, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah. Fox 13 News is part of the Great Salt Lake Collaborative. It's a group of local news outlets, academic groups, and community organizations all calling attention to the Great Salt Lake and trying to find solutions to save it. You can find out more by visiting the link on your screen.